Okay. See you soon. Sublime mystery. What's going on, guys? Just getting all set up. Um, rocking my my custom Oakland jersey that I got from a MLB store last year with the uh, at the event that I did at the MLB store with Gregory Siff and Tops. They made me this Oakland Blake jersey, so I figured I would rock it since Big Mac is wearing a Cardinals jersey. Oh, here he is. Let's go. Hey, that that's like uh, hey. it's like trying to figure out how to get there from my phone to my computer to Chrome to whatever. <laughs> but here we are. What's up, man? Here we are. Nice hey, tip my hat to you, brother. Yeah, likewise, man. Man, oh, that's, that's uh good. it's so weird it's how, amazing, how we how we connected, huh? I know. Have you told people yeah. the story? Have you told well, the story? Uh, yeah, I uh, I have last year when I did the card of you, um, I told the story, but I, I'm down to tell it again uh, to the fans. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know it, um, fans are piling in, which is amazing. So I did like a, I used to do a ton of live streams like this, but did I really? Done, I used to do it for a while. I did it every single day, every wow. single night at 10:23 p.m. Eastern. Why that? Why 10:23? Well, 23 is my favorite number. And okay. uh, it's also vo more memorable than like saying 10 o'clock or 10 15. So people are punctual. There you go. And it was during COVID when a lot of people were starting a live stream, especially creators, but people were doing it kind of in this like happy hour window. So no one was doing like the late night live streams. But this, this is the crew. You and Johnny Carson and Jay Leno and I David know, Leno. Was, they were starting yeah, their own. Yeah, we were competing for attention. Uh, <laughs> oh man, how, how's your life? Good, good. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, my Are older son's off to college. Yeah. yeah, so Max is at the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, going to be a student. Uh, Mason too. Yeah, Mason just uh, just uh, uh, signed on the dotted line uh, the other day, and so That's he'll exciting. be on so exciting to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. so my dad moment. What's that? Proud dad moment. Absolutely. Yeah, they're talented. We'll see where it goes. Um, it's yeah. you know it's a lot of work. They're young and you know a lot of mistakes ahead of them. But like I've told them since day one, I said you're you're only going to get better by making mistakes. You learn from them. Yeah. Yeah. You know the greatest line I ever had from Rod Dato, my college coach, was he used to call everybody Tiger because they he wouldn't remember their names. So Tiger, Tiger, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tiger never never make the same mistake once, you know. And if you don't, yeah, make, yeah. you're gonna make yeah. it right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like that. It took me a couple of seconds. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, all right. Never make the same mistake once. And you know, it's funny. Yeah. Remember no fear. Do you ever remember the no fear t-shirt? Oh yeah, yeah, the t-shirts. Yeah, 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 and the bumper stickers and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I actually had a t-shirt. They they actually made a t-shirt uh, back there. In, I think ninety two, ninety three. I think. Uh, and they had a T-shirt, green and gold, for the A's colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it was myself and Goose Gossage and Randy Reddy. We were one of their, uh, you know, we we're the names to uh, for baseball and then when No Fear was just starting out and made a T-shirt wow. called. That's what it was. Never make the same mistake once. That's awesome. I wonder if uh, those could still be found on eBay or, or somewhere. I'd love to rock one of those. You know what? You know it's funny that uh, you say that. My boys are into that vintage stuff, and they they totally. found a couple of yeah. They're, they're out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Out there. Yeah, I so. gotta keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I have to yeah, apply to your, your your store, man. It's like your your it's like unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for thanks for sending me those photos. Of I mean, course, man. I can't wait to. I I don't know when I'll be back east again. So. Um, maybe this summer. So, I mean, it's, uh, right now my son's, uh, Max is set to play, uh, somewhere in the Cape Cod league. So I'll be on the East coast, uh, yeah. sometime this summer, but, um, man, I, I missed it. I missed going to the East coast when I was playing and coaching and yeah. I loved it, but yeah, man. I'm a California, I'm California kid at heart. So I know me, well, me too, to be honest, I was just, uh, back there for a uh, complex con in Long Beach and a couple days in LA. Oh, and, really? And I, I love, I love SoCal. I love yeah. all of California. 
Um, yeah. My dad yeah. says hi, by the way. He's on. He also uh, just wrote, he said, hey, Mark, you probably don't remember, but you signed and dated a ball for Blake the night you set the rookie home run record before you left for Matthew's birth. Mm. Oh, that's cool. No kidding, really. Wow. Yeah, I guess. Man, I that's, guess that's, uh, wow. I, I was pretty young. I was, uh, I don't know. My dad could tell me. I, I, I was probably four. Um, yeah, was, yeah that's, God, that's 34 years ago. Young. I know Matthew yeah. just turned 34. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. He's he's done really well. Matt, uh, his son's Matt, done really well. So he's yeah. uh, actually just uh, started working for a new company. He was working for Taco Bell Corporate. Uh, he's a uh, mm -hmm. he's an analytics, uh, you know, one of those uh, those guys that writes and does those algorithms and does all the tracing and tracking. And it's just yeah. uh, so now he just uh, left Taco Bell. Now he's working for a company called Surfline. Okay. Which has every camera. Um, oh, Surfline. Every, yeah, surf every line. camera and oh, every, every. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's wave reports, dude. That's Surfline. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I had no idea how that. I mean, that is an awesome site, man. That's like you oh, go there amazing. and you can put that up on your on your computer, or your TV, and just and watch these these waves. And you know, if you want to put the pipeline or you want to put the wedge just here down in Newport, that gets crazy waves and yeah. watch these guys surf so but yeah, i'm pretty proud of him he's doing quite well man yeah doing really that's well that's great also i want to give a shout out to uh little blake blake grice he's on the stream right now uh he's 10 actually he might have just turned 11. um but i his dad also just sent me a photo of uh you and him i think you gave him a bat uh no but yeah that's anyways awesome. shout out blake blake's uh, heavy in the, the card scene as well he does a little youtube uh reviews and stuff which is awesome uh, man you're uh, okay, like you're I'm, I'm sorry i'm talking because i'm like no I just man, it's all you and it's like it's so like i know we started talking about like how we met and stuff but it's like you're what the i mean it's just the niche that you have right now and, and what you're doing is just phenomenal it's just Thank hats you. off to you and and Thank um you. yeah again i'm just uh I, I mean i wish i was there to give you a a big hug and like hang out and and hopefully yeah. that day will come soon oh i know i know it will um yeah man i'm, I'm super grateful it's been a, a crazy journey to get to where i'm at now but i'm so happy you know doing what i getting to do what i do every day and uh it's amazing it's a blessing which is great right. um it's yeah hey listen anything good is always got zigzags yeah. to get to man. yeah there's, yeah. there's not a straight line to anything, any kind of success. Yeah. You're gonna, yeah. And look at, look at the, look at it. You can see the energy coming off here. It's like it's <laughs> awesome, man. And, yeah, you're, man. and well, you get, you get extra energy, man. You're, you're my favorite athlete of all time. <laughs> uh, and there's not even a second place. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, bigger, you know, specifically here, but everywhere that I, everything that I'm doing right now is really exciting. That's fantastic. But I'm so pumped we were able to make time while the card is still live, which, by the way, let me yeah. just get a link. How's it uh, doing? I, You know, I don't I don't get, like, updates of, of, like, print runs, so I'm not exactly sure, but I know I ordered 200 of them myself, so at least 200. Wow. Uh, no, but I know a lot, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of really good feedback online, um, especially because everyone that's been following my art for some time knows that, you know, you're my favorite athlete. This was the most anticipated card for me of this set. And so I, a lot of people are coming out and supporting, which is awesome. Well, that's, that, well I yeah. appreciate And I'm going to send a bunch of them down to you as well. <laughs> and, and I know I texted you earlier, but I, I want to do paintings for you of um, uh, Max and Mason. Okay. Uh, for sure. Um, and I'll send yeah. them down. Well, hopefully. I need I hope there's a day that comes that you can you can do a a uh, uh, major league baseball card. Uh, yeah. Your, yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah. That would be just, wow. That that's full awesome. circle right there. Yeah. So. Um, all right. We have some fans are fans are stoked. They're still piling in and the comments are going nuts, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask just a couple questions. I want to sure. of fans. Tom Fage asks, Mr. McGuire, what's the best ball you ever hit? Which one stands out as one you crush? Wow. 
Do you have a favorite? Uh, there's so many, so many. Um, you know, I, I think right now, <clears throat> just off the top, I mean, gosh, dang it, there's so many. Obviously, number one, number one is in Tiger Stadium. And, and, and um, I mean, I I got called up and we, and we were, you know, we got called up in August of, uh, August of 86 and um, went to Baltimore and got rained out the first two nights. <laughs> I remember uh, Alfredo Griffin, who uh, who was our shortstop at the time. He he was doing a like a like a rain dance. He he wanted to rain for two days. He wanted to break, and he got to rain yeah. for two days. And then so yeah. I got to make my major league debut in Yankee Stadium, original Yankee Stadium. Um, and then it wasn't until Monday night that we left. Uh, um, we went to Detroit and uh, uh, faced a pitcher by the name of Walt Terrell who had at the time was one of the nastiest right-handed sliders I've ever seen at being a young 23 year old kid. And um, I think he got me the first two at bats. And then my third at bat, I hit ball this to dead center, the old tiger stadium. And, and it was four forty to dead center. And then wow. I mean, it, it disappeared. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. So, yeah. And it turned out that the uh, Tiger Stadium was like a home away from home for me. So I used to yeah. love the Tiger, old Tiger Stadium. But, again, that was probably, to me, that's a great one. But, you know, um, 60, 61 was probably one of the, the coolest ones because that was on my dad's 61st birthday. Oh, that's I mean, how amazing. Cool that? Yeah, that's like, you know, yeah. seriously, really? Yeah. September 7th, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, it's like, I hit 61 on my dad's 61st birthday. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really, really the better. Yeah. But then again, I can go back to, you know, uh, my walk off only at my walk off home run of the world series in mm -hmm. 1988 against the Dodgers. And it was our only win. It was actually my only hit of the series, but it was a walk off home run. And that was a, a childhood dream come true. Cause that's something that yeah. I did all the time in the backyard. And uh, so <laughs> that's just a few. I, I just had there. There were so many uh, that had so many meanings, but right off the top of my head, right there. And um, I don't know if you know, but now you got me thinking about home runs. I don't know if you know that I'm the only player in Major League history that hit back to back 16 inning game winners in two different wow. cities. That's crazy. We're man. in Toronto on a Sunday. Went 16 innings. I had, a, I had a home run in the 16th inning. That next Monday, we're playing in Cleveland. We go 16 innings, and in the 16th inning, I had a home run, and we ended up wow. winning the game. So that's just a little thing. Got the endurance. Cool. You're in it for the long haul. Cool might not be in those uh, those books. And again, yeah. there's no books anymore. It's all computerized. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Jason Miller's request was pretty easy. He just asked if you would say hi, Jason, so he can flex to his baseball buddies. Jason, <laughs> got to flex. Got to get those there muscles out there. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh, this is a good one. Okay, Krista asked. So says, question for you, Mark. Blake idolized you, but who, Mark, did you idolize as a kid? Who did I idolize as a kid? Well, I idolized my dad. Um, you know, growing up, you know, in the, you know, the 70s basically um you know we didn't have the the amount of information that these young kids have today so as far as like growing up and and looking up to an athlete uh that wasn't really um that wasn't in our blood at those times when we were kids um you know it was more or less you know our fathers were our idols and you know my dad was stricken by polio when he was seven years old and uh, you know, because of that, he was bedridden for seven straight months. And, you know, his right leg was considerably shorter than his left leg. And a brilliant, smart, you know, man that became an unbelievable dentist. You know, unfortunately, he didn't have the opportunity to play sports after seven years old, after he was stricken by. But knowing that the athletic ability that he had and, and the athletic ability my mom had that gave – you know, pretty much all five kids, all five boys, athletic ability, you know, and then watching my dad's work ethic as a dentist, you know, he was always the first one, you know, he would leave early in the morning to go get the, the office ready to go get ready for his patients. And he was always the last one to leave. And, and the thing is like one of the 
the thing, he was very one of the kindest human beings ever. He would like, he was one of our baseball coaches growing up and he would always wait in the parking lot until the last kid got picked up. He would never leave. And he was always just, he was just, he had the, the biggest, biggest heart ever. So uh, my father was, uh, you know, the guy That's I looked awesome. up to and yeah, just the, yeah. And the I, I see that, you know, from the success I had and the success he had as a dentist. So, yeah. Well, I imagine that uh, you are the hero of, of all your kids. Man. Well, I mean, I, 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 mean, I also, you know, it's funny because I from the original freeway fan, my mom. Says, <laughs> yes. Oh my, my gosh. Says, That's that. amazing. Yeah. Huh? That is so, yeah. I mean, that yeah. is just, I can yeah. see that. So I can I see that right now on the five freeway. It's amazing. I, yeah. I, so I, I'll I give really people, can. Yeah. So for people that don't know the story, uh, my dad and I had season tickets to the Oakland A's from 1985 until 1989. I was born in 1985. So I was going to Oakland A's games basically from when I was born. And uh, we were following Mark through the minors. You were on Team USA. And yes. uh, we're very excited, um, you know, for you as a prospect. And we were driving down in Southern California on a family road trip. So we were, you know, 300 miles from Oakland and we're driving on the freeway and my parents uh, look over and they see that it's Mark driving, uh, you know, his car <laughs> in a car next to us. So they're uh, waving him down, trying to get his attention. And I think, I think my dad had an Oakland A's hat, which actually I have in my bedroom. And he like waved the hat so that, you know, Mark would know who we are. But that was special because, A, like I, I think it was before you'd been called up and then it was also like you weren't in your gear. So like, you know, it's. You're just in right. street clothes. So uh, that's how hardcore of a fan uh, my dad was. And uh, obviously that's um, been passed down to me as well. So then yeah. we, uh, after you got called up, we saw you at spring training. Um, uh, I think that was in Scottsdale. And uh, I think my dad was able to like tell you the story and say, Hey, we're the guys from the freeway. And then you, you called us the freeway fans. And then, <laughs> you know, throughout your whole still California, to find somebody with an Oakland A's hat just didn't happen yeah. and especially on the uh, you know i-5 going down south to san diego you never suspect and all of a sudden and then 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 the story comes and it, it, it just went like light bulb went on my head i'm like oh my gosh i do remember that that time yeah. so like uh and here we are so cool. it's so cool and here we are I know. um yeah and then also for so i did uh i'm not sure who's in the crowd and if they know but last year with project 2020 it was my first set with tops uh, Mark McGuire was in the set, and I did, uh, I think, a pretty special version of the card. Let's see here. Hey, Mike. Uh, all right, I'll grab another one. The USA uh, one, right? USA? Yeah, so I did. I wanted to, uh, you know, do the 87 tops rookie card, but kind of have a nod to the 85 uh, Team USA card. And so I did a jersey swap. We had an American flag in the background. Um, at first, I tried to change the number on the jersey to, right. to 41, Remember and that? they made me change it back. To 25. Yeah, told me that. Yeah, they, they told me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dang it. But um, so that card uh, was released last year uh, right around summertime, and then it ended up being on the cover of Beckett Magazine in July. So it was like 4th of July, flag on the magazine. Um, and just recently, Beckett actually reprinted that magazine cover as a trading card. Oh, really? So I have uh, – in my next care package to you, I'm going to send you a handful of them. But okay. we ended up getting two cards out of one uh, with that design. And now I'm excited Thank you. Uh, to Good do Lord another Lord. one. I was, I was excited. I mean, I, I always, you know, I always think of you as an Oakland A's uh, guy, but I know, you know, much of your career was on the Cardinals. And uh, I was it. well, I mean, the well, thing about it, go, but this the funny thing is, yeah. like, it's been 12 years basically yeah. in the big leagues with Oakland, and only four with St. Louis. But people think of me as a Cardinal and I've been my whole career, basically. Yeah. Back when you say three, three quarters of it was with, uh, with, with Oakland. Yeah, you I know. know. Um, but it was cool. I think with this time around with the top guard to get some diversity and get you on the, on the Cardinals. Um, man. Cool. And I remember we actually, when we moved, so we lived in Florida for a long time. We moved back to California uh, when I was 14 and we did a road trip where we stopped at different baseball games. We saw you play in St. Louis. Um, and then we went and we saw, let me see, 
we saw a Braves game and a Rockies game, but it's cool, man. We've we've watched you swing the bat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love doing it. I love yeah. swinging. I went, you know, especially today. Gracias. Uh, especially today with uh, with all this, uh, you know, now that they're putting exit velo, you know, up on the boards, they're doing velo for pitchers and stuff. I, I would have loved to see my exit velo every day I played. <laughs> it's got, yeah. You know, you know, because I, you know, um, yeah, I'd love to see it because <laughs> it'd, yeah. it'd, it'd be, uh, be pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, Dad, I don't know if uh, if you guys are near a computer, but I can also send you guys a link that you guys could jump on and talk really quick. Let me see. Is that okay, Mark? If I send my dad a little link, if he wants to like jump yeah, in with sure. us. Yeah. Get- Absolutely. Um, okay, let me see here. Invite, copy. All right. I don't know if that'll come through or not. And if you're not, if you if you can't jump on, Dad, that's okay. I just thought of it that it'd be fun to get you on. Um, man. So what? A, so what are your? Uh, what? Are you, what's? What are you mostly working on these days? Is it? Is it the, the kids? Well, yeah, it's all about the kids, yeah. man. It's like, uh, yeah. well, I mean, as far as what I mean, uh, let's see. My son Mason still got, obviously still got one more year left in high school. Uh, okay. Max, oh, yeah, is yeah. I forgot that you, yeah, so, you commit yeah. before. So, my, so Max yeah. is gone, and so like you know, Mason's Mason's his main main position is a pitcher, right-handed pitcher. So, you know, I, I don't work in the cage that much, uh, like I was doing with Max, pretty much on an everyday basis. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's just really going to. Uh, so we, you know, we had to go to. Uh, let's see, we had to go to. Uh, or we go to we had to, we had to go to Jupiter like uh, we're in October for a big tournament. Um, you know, once that came over, that was pretty much done with. He might have a couple other things earlier, but it's now it's just more or less downtime right now. Gets just get him get bigger and stronger and uh, work on his pitch pitches um, and get ready for the high school season. I mean, he's got a chance to be drafted. You know, I mean, he's right now about 90, 92. He's touching ninety three. He's got to work on the breaking ball. He's got an unbelievable splitter, you know, um, but he needs to work on the the, the um, either a cutter or a curveball. Mm-hmm. But uh, his, his, his builds, his build reminds me of my my brother Dan, who was six eight six nine, you know, played in the NFL for five years. So his builds like oh, wow. that. I mean, he's tall, lanky. You know, he's six three. He's like one ninety, but he's the the projection of the body filling out just. Really, uh, really cool to see. I can't wait to see, really. Um, so it's just right now, it's just more or less watching. And, you know, the kids today, which I, I don't know how many young kids out there right now are listening that that are um, turning 16 or after 16, they don't have their license. So both my boys <laughs> have waited. They're waiting until like 18 years old to get their license. So it's like, you know, and I don't mind driving them back and forth to school and um, and it's, and so that's really what I do right now. And then once the, after the new year, we, you know, then we'll start kicking back up to, uh, get them ready for the season. And then it's all about baseball again. Yeah, man. My girls are, my girls are right now playing a little bit of soccer and some volleyball and a little bit of basketball. They're, you know, they're 11 years old and I have triplet girls. And, oh, wow. You know, yeah. Triplets. Yeah. yeah. So my wife Dang. wanted, my yeah. wife wanted one more and we got, we got three more. So yep. it's like uh, they're beautiful. They're great. They're all, all three different. Um, yeah, I told him. I said, yeah, if the boys ever make it, there's a good chance that uh, you know, be hanging at the ballpark. You never know. You might be, uh, you yeah. might be marrying another baseball player down the line somewhere. You know, it's like right. so. It's, um, yeah, but they're having a lot of fun. They're uh, so it's like I try to help my wife out with the girls as much as I can when when Mason's not doing stuff. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You How about you? You're, oh. you're near the beach at all? No, Cristal, right? No, I'm not. You know, San it's Diego? funny. What's that? You're in San Diego area. No, no, Orange County. Orange County. Orange. Oh, okay, Orange County. Yeah, 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 Orange County. So, yeah, when I was coaching with San Diego, I was driving 85 miles one way uh, each day. You know, it's just so I can live here, be at the be at the house. You know, and uh, and then Glenn Hoffman, Trevor Hoffman's brother who was our third base coach at the time, 
he lives another 20, 25 miles north of me. He was driving well over 100 miles, 100 miles. Away just to San Diego to coach. So, wow. but you know, that's the thing is, is like, you know, to, to, to coach in the city that you live in it, you know, yeah, you are away from home, but you get to sleep in your own bed when you're home. And, you right. know, that was uh, attractive to me, you know, uh, when the Dodgers basically let the whole coaching staff go um, after 15 and, um, um, with the, you know, they hired Davey and all the other coaches and let us go do what we did in San Diego, you know, went there for three years. So, but right yeah. now it's, just, it's all about the family and that's why I walked away from coaching. So to watch to see yeah. how these boys see if they can get there, you know? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, I can't imagine. So exciting. Yeah. Um, what about like, okay. So when you were playing for the A's, were you living in Oakland or, or in the Bay? I assume. Right? Yeah. Uh, for the, for the first couple of years I did, I rented. Um, and then I think it was like 89. I think I, I bought a place out in the, the East Bay in Alamo. Nice. I lived in Alamo, uh, through, I think it, uh, let's see through 90, 95, 96, I sold the house. And then 97, um, I lived in San Francisco, uh, mm -hmm. during the season. And uh, probably should have done that the whole time. <laughs> so just, I loved, it. I loved it there, man. I and yeah. the, one of the greatest things about the little loft that I had was we had a we had a underground parking spot, which is it's a, it's a rarity down yeah. in San Francisco. Well, parking, parking, parking yeah, 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 yeah. Here, yeah. yeah right by uh, just a couple streets up from just a couple streets up from Union Street. Hello. Oh, we got some. Hold on, we got. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Got an echo. Just up from Union Street. Hey. Oh, we got some. Hello. How are you? I'm 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 great. How are you, Mark? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. I've got a crazy echo going on here, Blake. I'm I'm great. How are you, Mark? <laughs> yeah, it's a sec. It's, it's delayed. Oh, I don't know why. Uh, a crazy going on here, Blake. I've got about a tense. Okay, hold on. I muted you for just a second, Dad, just to see if this like refreshes it. So, are you? Uh... All right, let's try. Oh, still delayed. Weird. Okay, hold on. I muted you for just. A it's second. almost like uh, what they're doing with MLB. So they, no signs. Can't, are, you, can't, uh... can't... <laughs> are you on your iPad? I wonder, wait, let me. I have two browsers open, so let me. Uh, there we go. That, that should get it sorted once he has that other thing closed. I think. Yeah, you probably have you. You don't need YouTube open when you have since you have StreamYard open. Okay, I I shrunk my browser. It, is that better now? Yeah, you probably have. You, you don't need YouTube open when you have. Since you still, you have a browser open that is playing the YouTube video, which is like there's a short delay. So we hear you in real time, but then we hear it again coming from the other browser playing live. All right, let me close so it. You have a browser open. Yeah, close you totally. Which is like there's a short delay. I will close. So we hear you in real time, but then we hear it again coming from the other browser. All right, let me close it. Yeah, close you totally. How about now? We can still hear it. Hmm. How about now? Uh, let's see here. I don't know, man. It still sounds weird. Do you have, like, does mom have YouTube on in the background or something? Uh, let's see here. Or is YouTube an app that might still be open? It's not like that weird. You have like does mom have YouTube on in the background? Well, she isn't here. She's at oh. Tessa's. Oh good. <laughs> All right. We got a spammer in the in the comments too. Sorry about that, Mark. We'll get it sorted in a second. Okay, no worries. All right. <laughs> Are you in your studio or are you are you in your studio? Uh, I'm in my studio. Actually, man, this is perfect timing. I want to take you guys on a little walk. I'm going to show you guys this. I'll show you. I can't spoil what it is. 
All right. Dad, whenever you're ready, flash like a peace sign and then I'll unmute you. In the meantime, I got to show. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. All right. Check it out. Let's see. Sounds good. Seems good. All right. Can you, okay. I'm not hearing an echo anymore and my yeah, mouth right. is moving on screen as I'm talking instead of 10 That's seconds right. later. Okay. So, so this is in my, in my, uh, my art studios back there. This is like the hallway, but this is a special little cabinet. <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, and it's oh, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of stuff. There's some great wow. stuff. Uh, and so a lot of that is actually from like people that are watching this stream right now. Uh, last year we would, people knew I was such a big fan that they would like send me uh, all kinds of, you know, people sent me balls and figurines. And like, we have a bunch at my parent is my dad's house, uh, my parents' house in California, but my collection in New York is all thanks to literally like the people that are watching today, uh, sending me stuff. And I had to, had to get it all in a sweet little display. So I have a little shrine that that's fun to show people. They never expected. It's like a closet yeah. of clothes and then just a, you know, <laughs> little shrine. Well, thank you everybody out there. That's yeah. wow. That All is, right, Dad, I think you're rocking now. I think I'm I think I'm here. <laughs> All right. So you have a lot more uh memories of early days of with Mark because I hear him from you, but I feel yeah, like you well, the stories better than I can. When we talked uh when we talked to you, Mark, at the um uh at spring training in eighty seven. Uh that was that was the first year you made the opening lineup, right? Uh, after being, yeah, as far yeah. as making a team out of spring yeah, training. So we yes. saw you when you came up in late '86 because we we had season tickets. We were uh, we were just off the third base corner of the dugout is where oh, our, nice. our seats were. So uh, Blake was born uh, January 14th. We were there for he was there with us with Rebecca and I for uh, for opening night. And he came to most of the games, and Rebecca let me watch the game, up. and she took care of Blake. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But Blake kind of got to Great. know all the players because our seats were so close there. Yeah. And uh, he would pretend to be different players than when he got older. So he'd say, I'm Terry Teinbach because he couldn't <laughs> say yes. And I'm Carney Lansford, and, you know. I'm I'm Alfredo. I'm Walt Weiss, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's awesome. And he would hit little plastic balls over the backyard fence, and we would have to go. We would have to go fetch him. Okay. Um, but when we met you at that spring training, um, you mentioned that I had uh, on the car a, a USC license frame, and that you thought maybe we were somebody that you knew from school, but you weren't quite sure. Um, so you re you remember that at that spring training, maybe that's, you know, forgotten now, but that was uh, what you told us several months later, uh, crossed your mind when we flashed the A's yeah. hat and waved yeah. at you. Actually, it was Rebecca who uh, took and flashed the hat at you through the window and it's, uh, i can uh, it's amazing i can still visualize that right now and, and it's uh, like i i it's like when that when that story was it been a couple of years since we when we really chatted about all this i think and it's like and it's like oh my gosh it's like it just it's it's right there when that it's just like one of those stories i didn't even have to think about like and it and it's so weird how that thing stuck in because it was good yeah, a fast thing, right? It wasn't yeah. like pulled over and, and had coffee or anything together. It's like, hey, I just remember driving on like, and then like, what is somebody from Oakland going down I-5 to San Diego for? And then like, yeah, so, and then here we are now. Here we are. Many, many, many years yeah. and many different roads. And here we are together. Yeah, it's pretty amazing in Southern California just to see somebody you recognize on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> no, no, you're right. And especially today, now people are driving fast. And, yeah, it might happen a little bit more because the traffic's so bad. Phone, here, maybe. You know, yeah. what's that? They're looking at their phones or their GPS too. Cars are distracted. <laughs> I know, I know. It is. It's. 
it's scary, man. It's like, uh, I mean, do you do you, what do you do when you're there? Do you drive around New York a lot, or are you just mainly? I don't, drive, just, I don't have a car in New York. Why, uh, you know, whenever yeah. I come back, uh, you know, when I go to California to visit, I'll rent a car, and it's nice to get a little bit of time behind the wheel. How's that feel when you don't drive a car for a while, and also you drive a car? It feels <laughs> like it feels like a treat. I like I like it. <laughs> uh, I enjoy you know I like road trips. I don't really like traffic, but I got a yeah. uh, you know got a lot of miles of driving in when I was in. LA just last week for the complex con stuff. What it was cool. That's awesome. That yeah, is so man. Cool. That well, is I'm, so I'm so, Oh, go ahead, dad. Oh, I was just going to say that we also in, uh, September 97, uh, Blake and I saw a game in St. Louis. And I don't know if you remember, we stayed after the game to say hi to you. And we said, hey, you know, we're the freeway fans. And uh, it was kind of a drizzly, rainy night uh, at the last week of the season. Really? Really? Yeah. In, in, in 97? 97. We were. Oh, okay. So that's when I was just traded over there. Yeah. And we yeah. were uh, driving a, back to yeah. California. We just moved back from Florida after nearly oh, really? years. Florida. So let's just drive from Florida to California, but we're going to take a, a right hand turn and we're going to go up to St. Louis. Yeah. Well, we went to Atlanta and then St. Louis. Oh, there you go. You saw some good baseball then. And, did you stop uh, there in Atlanta? Did you watch the Braves play at that time when you did that? We watched the Braves play there. I love Turner Field. I thought that was a great ballpark. Have you been to the new one? Have you been down I to the new one? I have been to the new one. Um, Atlanta, it's off the charts. It's, yeah. It is as good as a, a stadium could be. It is highly recommended. It's like not even near downtown. It's in the suburb, and but they're building the whole area. The, you know, everything's there. The, the, the Omni Hotel is connected, basically connected to the to the ballpark and the restaurants. And uh -huh. there's people out there. It's just you know that 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 should be a, on the bucket list for. Um, you know, and on top of it, they're world champions this year too. So yeah, well, that's good to know because I thought that Turner Field was really nice with the food court. You know, actually, it was. there were patio area out beyond mm -hmm. the outfield. Yeah. Uh, it was, but I if you you, you get a chance to go there, there, what's that? I remember. I remember I specifically. I remember that Braves game because I didn't bring a jacket, and uh, like. It was there was like a sixty dollar windbreaker that I remember being like, oh, I don't think we're we're gonna be able to get it, and you're like, go for it, and I roar that for a long time. <laughs> I, I, I remember that uh, Braves game actually pretty well. That's good. Yeah, but I'm, that was I, how I, I became an A's fan. I went uh, when we moved up. I didn't like the Dodgers. Um, Johnny Padres, pitcher in the '60s, blew me off when I was a kid. Mm. My dad and I waited to get his autograph, and everybody else gave me an autograph, but Johnny Padres blew me off, and I hated the Dodgers from then on. <laughs> so I thought I would be a Giants fan when we moved up, up here. Uh, I moved up here in 1978 to the Bay Area and um, went to a game at Candlestick, froze my ass off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> went to a game out at the Oakland Coliseum. You know, there was nobody there. There were, you know, there were girls laying in the beach, in the bleachers, getting sun at day yep. games. And it was just really nice atmosphere. Uh, so I ended up becoming an A's fan, getting A season tickets and um, had tickets That's for a year in 73 and saw Ricky uh, break the, the record. And then uh, after I got married, my wife and I got a pair of seats. Uh, wow! Which are the ones that, that Blake came with us to uh, to later on and seeing you Bash Brothers and uh, breaking our hearts in 1988. Yeah. And then <laughs> Kirk Gibson killed us. <laughs> yeah, it broke, it broke all our hearts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. But three years in a row, it's pretty good. It's pretty special. It's tough. Yeah, to get absolutely. Out, Absolutely. Uh, we had a good run there. I mean, that's just the, uh, you know, the Haas family, um, you know, you know, Sandy Allerson, Walt Jockety, everybody there, just, you know, Tony with the, uh, with his coaching staff. I mean, it's just the Haas family just, you know, Mr. Haas would do anything at that trade deadline to try to help yeah. this club and 
and uh, we did it. We had a nice little run, and you know, and, um, that's that's yeah, really really hard to do. It looked like it was a fun clubhouse. At least it looked. That yeah, way. it was really fun. I mean, um, it it was fun to observe. I, I mean, you know, being a young kid, I mean, think about it. So I was like in my you know second, third, and fourth years in the big leagues, and see back then when you're a young kid in the big leagues, you don't you don't say a word. You just you're you know, nowadays the game is so different where, you know, it's like every kid wants to do their own thing and and it's like free for all and which is fine. It's it, if they want to have fun that. But, you know, they, I, I was raised up where you can have fun. But when that first pitch is thrown, it's, it's about winning the ball game. Um, but it's just like learning from, you know, like, think about it. my rookie year, Reggie Jackson. My second year was you know, as far as salty veterans, Reggie Jackson, second year was Don Baylor, third year was Dave Parker, Ricky Henderson, Dave Stewart, Dennis Eckersley. I mean, go down the line, these yeah. guys. I mean, it's just like Willie Randolph, um, Ron Hassey. Um, you know, they, you know, if I if I said anything wrong, I was put in my place. And and I'm okay with that because that's called like when we grew up, that's called earning your stripes. You know, you earn your stripes and and then as the revolving door goes and they start leaving the game, then all of a sudden you get to that point where it You're comes to you guys in check. Yeah, you keep guys in check. And, and yeah. today's game's a little bit different. Kids are coming up and, you know, allowed to do little things that, that um, probably wouldn't have done 25, 30 years ago. That's fine. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, those, those days were awesome. I mean, I can't – I wish, you know, I wish I would have got to a chance to – I know I got to the playoffs later in my career, um, though I was injured um, in 2000. I wish I got a, another chance to go to the playoffs, you know, when I really, really knew who I was as a hitter. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get that chance. Yeah. You uh, thinking of coaching again? No, I don't think I will. Um, <clears throat> you know, I got, you know, when I stepped away, I stepped away. I, it's like one of those things like, you know, I saw my boys start growing up. And when when I – Tony brought me back in the game in 2010, you know, I, I told my wife, let's just go year to year and let's see how this thing goes. Um, you know, and then it turned out that the three years in St. Louis and, you know, um, I accepted – first of all, I accepted the, the job to be hitting coach 2010. And like three weeks later, I found out that I was having triplets so, uh, yeah, so then, you know, and then as the years went on, it, it you know, it, it got harder and harder to leave. And, and being in St. Louis, I loved every minute of it. It's just being away from the family, kids going to school. It, granted, it was elementary school and stuff like that, but there's a lot of things I missed. And I made a promise to myself that you know, I'm not going to do that when they get into high school. Um, as I saw my boys, as their athletic ability – started to, to materialize and I started to see things and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, they, I, I think these kids have a, you know, they have a knack about this game. They're, they're, they're very smart. Uh, they're, they had a, a very high baseball IQ, although they're two totally different individuals physically and mentally. Um, and so I just said, you know, I want, I'm going to be, I want to be there. And, um, you know, I ended up walking away from another year left on my contract with San Diego to be to be with them and you know so now one's in college and one's going to go to college with the possibility of being drafted this this coming july in wow. 2022 so we'll see where it goes i mean again i mean there's so many kids out there right now that are so talented in this game the great game of baseball you know and as you know as they say it is one percent that make it you know today it's even less than one percent that make it you know you're talking about you know, 0.5% that make it to the big leagues and stay there. And it's really, really tough. There's these, they have these algorithms now. They, they pretty much can project depending on how you are, what kind of player and all this stuff that they do now, they can pretty much project when you're going to be there, when mm -hmm. you're going to start tailing off. So um, we'll see where it goes. I, I see what I see. I'm a visual guy. I love the computers. I love I love all the stuff about analytics. But to me, I want to see somebody physically run, physically throw, physically hit, and then we can put the all the analytics stuff together and 
you know, so I got an 18 year old kid and a 17 year old kid. And, and right now, you know, they're really talented. So are they uh, thinking of going, trying to go straight to pro ball or go to school? Well, I mean, Max, Max, uh, Max had the opportunity of being drafted. He wasn't drafted. Uh, there was the talks with the team uh, to draft him in the later rounds this last year in 21. And uh, we talked and I just said, don't, don't waste. It's, it's not going to work. Um, let, let, I'm going to just, he's going to go to college and it's a three year plan. And when you're going to see him in three years, you know, uh, he's, he can just as well within a year or two after being drafted out of college, you can be in the big leagues if, if things go well. Mason at a high school pitcher, he does well. He did, you know, he does the things that he's supposed to do. I mean, there's another opportunity to be drafted at a high school. Um, but if not, he goes to school for three years and to see where he'll be in three years, um, starting in 22 would be, it's going to be really interesting. So, but, you know, keep my fingers crossed. And, and, if uh, you go to school, might they be Trojans? Well, you know, they're at the University of Oklahoma. Ah. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. So they had an opportunity. Max had an opportunity to, to go to SC, but um, he felt the connection at Oklahoma was, you know, much stronger than the connection at USC at the given time. Uh -huh. And so uh, right now he's he's a Sooner. And then uh, Mason, my son Mason, the other day was the national uh, uh, letter of intent signing day, and Mason signed the letter of intent to go to University of Oklahoma. For next year so oh, good for them yeah yeah It'd just be just be going to okc a lot <laughs> yeah we were hey, just uh, there there a couple of weeks ago yeah we were just there a couple of weeks ago so with the whole family Mark, we enjoyed uh, it very good friend of mine eric uh he eric? wants to know eric yeah your eric. thoughts on juan soto juan he's my soto. mvp like nobody but it's like he's the mvp yeah sorry mvp yeah. yeah right. you Eric, you have your answer. <laughs> you so I uh, ask earlier about Otani, which, you know, argued case could awesome. be made there too, right? Yeah. Awesome. Although I I think Otani's been phenomenal. Guerrero's my MVP. Guerrero's been there from day one. Uh, Otani, second half, did not fulfill what he did the first half. Um, really slacked off, although the end of the, the – end of the year numbers were fantastic doing both ways. But when you have Guerrero Jr. who played in yeah. three different cities for their home team, Dunedin, Buffalo, and in Toronto, and put the numbers up what he did to put the team on his back like he did and to come up to the last day short, missed it by one game to go to the playoffs, uh, Guerrero is my MVP. So, wait, Gu Vlad or Juan? Vlad Jr. is the MVP for the American oh, League and Soto for oh, the National oh, League. Oh, yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, that's good intel. Soto, for Soto. Is, exactly. It's funny. Want. When Soto and Kuna broke in, this basically the same time. And I remember Andy Green, the manager of the Padres, uh, and he and I, he goes, what do you think? And he goes, he goes, he really liked Acuna. And I said, Soto. And he goes, why? Why do you like Soto? He said, and I said, you see what he does with two strikes? He spreads out. He puts the ball in play. And I said, what 20-year-old kid is going to do that? And look what he's doing right now. I mean, this kid can hit, flat-out hit. And um, his numbers are going to be there. That algorithm, that numbers are – I mean, he hadn't even reached his peak yet. So it's like, uh, you know, God willing and health and everything like that. But – Absolutely love him. I mean, Acuna is fantastic too. Don't get me wrong, but it's like when you see the difference in young kids, you're like, okay, what's? And the thing is, to me, Acuna, um, Soto, to me, it's like steady Eddie. Man, he's going to be steady Eddie throughout 162. He's going to be there just because of his approach at the plate, uh, and he plays, you know, a pretty damn good defense. And he's got right here. He's got baseball IQ. Nice. How about when uh, when you played? Who were who were some of the favorites uh, favorite people that you got to play with? You want to join oh, us man. to play with? I mean, um, obviously, um, I mean, Reggie was like, I mean, I remember laying on my 
floor watching the World Series games, the Yankees versus the Dodgers and his epic battles with Bobby Welch. And then all of a sudden I get to play with Reggie Jackson and Bobby Welch at the same time. You know, um, you know, Dennis Eckersley, obviously just um, uh, the, the respect I have for him to for a human being to go through what he had to go through his life. You know, all these different avenues and a lot of these roadblocks and he overcame that and um, just to, to do what he did and coming over to and a trade and it was 87 coming over as a starter and then Dave Duncan and Tony saying, hey, I think we should I think we should put you to the bullpen and to be one of the most dominant closers. Excuse me. Oh, sorry about that one. No dominant worries. Closers of all time. Um, um, you know, and from a guy that was a starter to a dominant closer into the Hall of Fame, um, you know, I can still, I, it's just so, I used to always see him like run up there to go to the bathroom or something. And he's, He's sitting in the he's sitting in the clubhouse just smoking his cigarettes like a pack of cigarettes. He was so damn nervous before he went out and went into the bullpen. But the funny thing is, like nobody would ever know that he was so nervous. But like it's like he was so he would smoke a pack of cigarettes before he go out there and throw. Um, that's old school stuff. But I mean, I remember like, like so many guys. I just I mean, learning from Dave Stewart and and. Uh, and oh, Carney Lansford. Um, I have my wife in here. You want to say hi? We're live on YouTube. It's my wife, back here, Stephanie, and the two dogs. And it's I. Hello. Blake and his dad. Yeah. Sorry about that. What? Okay. So, we can all, I know it's been a while. We can let you go anytime, Mark. No, I don't need to go anywhere. I, I, I'm enjoying this. I think this is fantastic. It's like, yeah, hey, you Mark, me I'm, you pick me I'm wondering, like, speaking, speaking of, of Eckersley, at the time he was moved from being a starter to the bullpen, I had the impression that he didn't like the idea at first, but that he grew into it. Is there any truth to that? You, well, uh, he very well, it very well could have happened. I, I, I didn't, I've never heard anything that he wasn't happy with it, but I would, I would have to think at the time the conversation happened, I would probably think, cause once you're a starter, you always think you're a starter. And then, you know, in those days there wasn't really, there was like a few closers. It was us usually by committee. Uh, if you were lucky enough to have a closer, you had one. Um, but we didn't really have anybody. And then for some reason, Dave Duncan, who's a, probably should be in the Hall of Fame as a pitching coach. Um, it's like what he saw. And when he went to Tony and said, we, 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 you know, with the stuff he has now, think about this. And I talk about this. If any, uh, almost every day that somebody brings up talking about closer, we would have a one run lead. And I remember running out to the, out on the field and Dennis Eckley's running in from the bullpen and within nine pitches, 11 pitches, the game was over with. And I would sit there and, and it's like, I, we would never have any kind of like nervousness of like, Oh, we have to, this is such a, you know, so much pressure right here. This game, whatever it may be a playoff game or a serious, you know, a game that win the, 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 the West, the flag or something. It's like the uh, American league championship flag, whatever it may be. It's like, we're sitting there and it's like nine pitches. We're running in. It's over with. And it's like, you don't see that anymore. You know, it's like, it's like the amount of like, I'm going right out the hitter and the hitter says, I know this pitcher's coming right after me. I'm ready to hit. And you know what? He, you know, there's days he got, there's days he gave it up. He gave it up, but it was so few and, and he never walked anybody. He went right after him. That, that's um, something I remember about Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa. If they brought in a middle reliever and they walked anybody, they were gone. <laughs> you're right. Well, you're right. If you, did, if you didn't have control, you couldn't throw the four quadrants, they're shipping you down to AAA to work on that. You know, and unfortunately today, that's the sort of the, the gray area right now. They want you to throw hard as you can, but they're not worried about you hitting the four quadrants where, listen, how about instead of throwing a hundred, how about throwing 95 and hitting all the quadrants? And then you're, you're controlling that 95 and then maybe you want to hump up to a hundred. Well, you're already programming to hit those four quarters. 
So it's like, but today's thing is they're not worried about that. They're just worried about guys throwing as hard as they can. And, you know, and that's the one thing that is they have to really tighten up. They have to tighten that stuff up in the game because it's like the games are way too long, way too long. Yeah. 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 yeah, they used to sometimes come in under two hours, but never three. And now if they're, <laughs> you know, if they're under three, you think it's a quick game. Well, what, uh, Jim Cott and Randy Jones, I think, they were telling me they pitched the game down in San Diego. I think Jim Cott told me this. He said the game started at 7 o'clock. He was sitting at the theater at like 9.15 <laughs> or something like that. It was like, it was unbelievable. It was like, they, it was like one, two, three, one, two, three. You know, and then – Guys just hit, you know, guys just hit and guys threw strikes. And if you think about it, you know, it's like we have the defenders back there. Let, you know, pitch to contact, pitch to contact. And if you can strike them out, you strike them out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a really, uh, that, what a great time, man. I'll tell you what, being with Ack and watching that and then hearing the stories about his life is just uh I would hope someday they do a movie on him because it's like his life is just somebody they, they need to see it because it's incredible to where what he's gone through to get where he and then to be a successful uh, announcer with Boston, you know, with the Red Sox. So, yeah, Scott had a question he said, what would you do to shorten the game? Whew. Shorten the game. Oh, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like, I, I don't know if there's, I, I think it all starts with the minor leagues. It, it starts with development. You have to develop these kids. Unfortunately, these kids are so talented today. They're not spending the time to develop them. They're rushing them to the big leagues a little too early. You know, instead of sitting there and earning their stripes in A ball, double A, and then triple A, mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with that. That's called experience. OK, and so now they're getting rushed up to the big leagues. Listen, they're going to be there, but they're getting rushed up too soon to where when they have failure, they don't know how to deal with failure. And when you don't have to deal with failure at a big league level, it's really hard to get out of that. Um, yeah. And it's like you don't think the thing is, is you have to allow these kids to fail. No, nobody's successful. Nobody's ever played this game 162 days. And gone home, looked in the mirror and said, that's the best they've ever done. There's no way. they Because there's somewhere through that six months that they were horrible. Yeah. They were non-existent. Right. You know, and unfortunately, these young kids, when they're non-existent, they don't know how to get out of it because they've never gone through it in the minor leagues where they had to dig themselves out of it. And then all of a sudden they're rushed to the big leagues because they've had so much success that when they have failure and then – Maybe on the downside is like then if somebody has failure, then all of a sudden some coach goes, hey, we need to change the person when really you don't have to change anything. It's more of a mindset because they have yeah. the physical ability to play. Now let's work on their mindset and, and how they're thinking up here, which will allow the body to do things that are a little bit better when you're thinking neg other than thinking negatively, you know? Yeah, it seems like. I mean, if I if I was playing and I was in the minors, I'd be trying to get up to the majors as fast as possible. One of the reasons because of the giant pay discrepancy, like like minor leaguers are like are barely like living wage. You know, it's well, that's been that, but 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 that's been met. Like, now it's been brought to the attention for the last I don't know probably five or six years. <clears throat> former minor leaguers that brought this to the forefront, and they're trying to get some stuff done with this, which I don't know if it will ever happen. Listen, we all weren't paid worth the crap right i mean 600 650 dollars a month my first year 650 dollars and the second year was like 800 so it's like yeah i mean it's like what do you i was living in my parents house uh or i was living at, 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 at my wife's house at the time when i was married earlier uh, my first wife her parents house and it's but that's just what happens and it's like you know that that's earning your stripes and you have to deal with that and it's something that it, you have to stick out. I mean, it's like, I don't know, understand. I don't think the owners will ever change. It. I know, I know they, they've made some kind of a pay raise. I don't think they'll ever change it because you're only right. working minor leagues. You're only working like four to four months of the year. You're only playing, you're only getting paid four months of the year, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, other than that, you're on your own. And even though you're part of the, the, the major league, uh, the, the team, you're not getting paid during the off season. So either one, you're getting another job. 
or two, you're trying to survive until you get back to spring training, or you get a job going to play winter ball, which a lot of these kids go down and they play winter ball and they get paid a lot of money to go down there. A lot more than, you know, for the short time they're out, a lot more considered than they would be playing here in the, in the minor league. So, um, yeah, I, I think it sucks, but that's just the way it is. And, and, and in, in order to get there, you have to deal with this. You know, um, there's really and – then, and then the major league, being on the 40-man uh, and being a part of the union, minor leaguers aren't a part of that. Mm-hmm. So, like, the basic agreement that is supposed to expire on December 1st, real shortly, the minor leaguers have nothing to do with that agreement. They will someday when they become on the 40-man roster. But yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, you're in little towns all over across America, even though they, they, they eliminated, I think, 40 plus teams this last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to, the thing is, is you have to play and you have to play down there to understand, especially how to get out of failure and get out of an 0 for 20, get out of a rut that you're getting your tits lit for the for four or five straight days you have to be able to do that because i'm telling you it's going to suck during the time in the minor leagues but it will benefit you when you get called up because Mm -hmm. there's going to come a time in the big leagues that you're going to absolutely suck i did everybody has everybody's Mm -hmm. driving home before and and they're driving home going why am i playing this game i suck i hate myself what's going on you know listen that's just talking out loud letting some steam off you know you don't really think that but it's like you're trying to make yourself feel better even though you think like like when i got traded to to st louis we were on a long road trip and i i believe i was like in a i don't know let's say three for 50. now that's pretty bad right horrible and i remember like one of the last games in New York, I got thrown out of the game. I was so pissed off, and Jim Joyce and I were going at it left and right, and he ended up throwing me out of the game. And I was like, "Good, I'm out of the game." But I stunk, and then we fly back home to to Oakland, and I think a day or two later, I was traded. Um, and then I go back to then I go to St. Louis, and I started off bad in St. Louis. So it's like here I am. Saying, I'm like, wait a minute, I stink. I'm thinking I'm really bad in Oakland, although I'm I'm not. And then I go to St. Louis, and then I went for like two for 28, my first 28 at bats in St. Louis. And people are going, What do we trade for this guy for? <laughs> you know? But yeah. walked on the, when I walked my first game in St. Louis in 97, and I was in that two for 28. My first at bat, I walked up, and it was a standing ovation. <laughs> I was like, What? I'm like, this doesn't happen. Where's this happen? Like this didn't happen. I was like, Oh my God. I mean, like, and I, then I said, all right, this is where I'm staying. You know, yeah, this, man, is, man. this is it, man. So, yeah. But I know it's just, but the thing is, is like, I'm, and it's, it's all about development. And the unfortunate thing is we're not developing the kids long enough, especially with development is failure and they have to learn how to deal with failure. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they're going to get just chewed up and spit out. And it's not fair. It's like, Mm -hmm. cause a lot of talented kids, if you don't know how to deal with failure and you get there and you're so talented and you keep failing, you know, there's a time comes a time that that phone, that's not going to ring. And um, you're going to be looking for another job somewhere. And and it's unfortunate because you're so talented, but that's what it's about um, to the, to to your question, Patrick. So it's like, I've just, I just think development is the thing that if we start developing these kids a little bit better to know really the boring part of baseball, the ABCs of baseball, you're going to start seeing a better brand of baseball Unfortunately, the emphasis isn't on that anymore. Mm-hmm. Tough to fix. A lot of moving parts. Yeah, and then every every organization's different. You know, that's the whole thing. It's every organization. I mean, um, I mean, I remember the strikeouts. I mean, I mean, I struck out a lot, but I walked. I walked a lot. You know, I, I had almost a four hundred three ninety seven career on base percentage. So yeah, I struck out, but I walked. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like today's when this, when I was coaching, all of a sudden the strikeouts started. All of a sudden I started seeing these kids strike out and strike out. I'm sitting there going, if I struck out three times, I couldn't sleep for like, I, I would never sleep. I couldn't wait to get to the ballpark the next day to try to you know stop this and whatever. And today's thing is like you strike out four or five times a game. Kids are walking out of the clubhouse and not worried about being sent out, not worried about anything, which is unfortunate because they should be. Because if you're not, if you're missing the ball more than you're hitting it, you know, to me, there's there's no room in baseball. I mean, you got to be able to, you have to be able to put the ball in play, not just a few times, a lot of times, more than than you're taking your right or left hand turn to the dugout. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Like, tell me about, tell me about the studio. Oh man, it's gorgeous. So, so I, like, uh, how long did it take you to? How long did it take you to, to like, this is it. This is a spot. Well, uh, I had when I first I first moved to New York about three years ago, and I had a separate apartment in Manhattan and a studio in Queens, and I love that studio and I have some good memories there, but. Um, when those leases ended, it was also, you know, in the middle of COVID. And I thought for sure that I would just be moving back to California and come back uh, with my parents and post up there and was excited to do that. And then I found this spot on Craigslist and it was just gorgeous. So I decided I had to at least come see it. So I came and saw it and I figured I had to at least put in an application and I did. And then it, you know, next thing I know I'm signing a lease and, uh, the cool thing about this space is that it's like the whole second floor of this building. Um, I have two bedrooms, an office, and this art studio that we're in now. And so I have a ton of space with like zero commute because I can roll out of bed and be at work. And then like the icing on the cake was below below me on the ground floor is a retail space. It used to be a clothing store called Brooklyn Industries, and it's been empty for a while. And so ever since I moved in here, I've been eyeing that as a potential gallery space and going back and forth with the landlord, trying to uh, establish some rapport and credibility with him that he knows I could, I could handle that. And also like just become friends with him. It will give me a little better price. Uh, Cause it's definitely a, uh, it's expensive, but oh, yeah. we, you like know, it took me about a year to get, to get a, like to a spot with my, within my career that I'm comfortable, you know, making that investment in myself and, be like haggling him down on price where it just sat empty for a year. So I'm like, Hey man, at least if we give you something, you know, you're, you're getting something. So it's exciting. We just got in the space on October 1st uh, was technically when our lease started. And so we've been in there just over a month now and we've had just one event uh, one time where we had people over in mass, um, but it was a blast and everyone loved it. And now it's just uh it's a dream, man. Every time I wake up, I'm like, I can't believe I have this this beautiful studio, this gallery. Uh, if I could change anything, the only thing I would change is just pick up this building and put it in California. But uh, the neighborhood's also cool. I mean, I love Brooklyn, to be honest, more than Manhattan. So everything is, everything seems to be working out as it should. Uh, Congratulations, really, you know, that's awesome. That way for a little while, yeah. So you're so so it's. Uh... So you're working them like it's maybe something might happen in the near future, or is it still uh, in terms of a move back, back west? No, the bottom floor. The bottom floor. Oh no, I the haven't. I mean, oh, you oh you had the bottom floor. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I just I just oh, got that's it. Where it's at. Oh, okay. So the pictures I sent you are from downstairs, which is the retail space. Here oh. is the upstairs, which is just uh, it's like this is where I actually do the painting. Um, yeah. This is the actual art studio, and then the gallery down below. And we're on like a pretty busy street corner. So we have like great foot traffic. Um, we've got flags on the side of the building, you know, that we're making our mark. And fortunately, my dad uh, and my mom both got to come out uh, last month and uh, see the space. I hadn't seen them for about a year and a half. So that was a, a great visit. And they helped me. We were hanging uh, hanging paintings. Um, That's awesome. You know, it's a, a great location. Video. It's, well, it looks uh, like it looks like it on the photos that sent me. It's like it's like, yeah, I can see that that'd be like a it's like a cool hangout. Like, yeah. is there a bunch? Of, there's all like little restaurants and coffee houses and stuff all through there. Yeah, it's a yeah, great lots. part, a great yeah. part of Brooklyn. Uh, Rebecca really? and I were saying how we could live here. <laughs> wow, <laughs> just what Blake would like. Yeah, it's about to get. No, you guys are welcome. It's about to get <laughs> cold though. Today was the first cold day. Uh, really? What? what 
We'll never it leave California. It wasn't even that cold. It wasn't even that cold. It just felt good. Um, but yeah, I would love to have you guys out, Dad. Oh, man, I'll, be, that's, I'll, be that's... Back, I'll be back there before you guys move out here. I know that. Well, how, sure. So, like, how long does it take you to do? I'm sure you get requests all the time, right? Yeah. From friends, family, people like something special for their special loved ones. And what's your turn turnaround to get one done? And first of all, can you do that? And can, can people ask yeah. you this? And, yeah. and then, um, and then it's like, when you, when you do that, like from, I mean, where is that put in like, or like you, you got a hundred, hundred different orders in front of them or how does that, you know, it's like, cause it's amazing. Yeah. Like and I can only imagine what people come to you from, corporations and other card companies say, hey we want you to do something for the special occasion and let's just say they have like, three weeks sorry we have three weeks yeah oh they're gonna pay you very well yeah. it's like wait a minute i got all these other things i gotta do so how do you like that's yeah you can't just uh, do a painting in a like less yeah, than I mean, two hours or maybe you can't i don't know well definitely not less than a few hours but you know if i'm if i'm locked in on a painting uh unless it's not, if it's not overly complex, I can usually do a painting in a day. Um, and a lot of that I did like on these type of live streams, I would let people hang out the whole time I painted a canvas from blank to what I turn into tops to make a card. Um, if someone comes to me and says, I want to commission something, which is very common, it's a huge part of my business. Uh, it'll depend on the kind of the current pipeline of what I've got lined up. Usually it's in the realm of like two weeks. Uh, from when if you brought me something that I in within two weeks, it would be ready to ship to you uh, wherever you are, you know, wherever that collector is in the world. So, uh, but like I said, I mean, there's a price for everything. So if somebody comes and says, I, I have a pain, I have a need, I need to get this, you know, anniversary gift and I've got to have it by Tuesday. I will usually be able to get it done. Um, depending on the pipeline, it'll be priced according to, to that. Um, yeah, but it, it's awesome, man. I think uh, I'm really fortunate to have a lot of experience in like the marketing side and brand building side of the business, which is what I was doing before I wor worked as an artist. And so when I switched over and started painting full time, that was the one thing that uh, I felt really confident about is my ability to like market myself and and build a business around any really about around anything and happens to be my art. But so you, cool. you had, uh, I don't know if you, somebody else asked like who I looked up to, who did you yeah. look up to as a, as a, as an artist, is there an artist, artist. that you saw there? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess it depends on the age. Uh, like now, like my biggest influences are Basquiat, um, Andy Warhol, and, and they are like a lot for the brand building stuff. Um, there's also a couple artists, which are really cool. Uh, Gregory Siff, who actually, he painted the, bats that pete alonzo won the home run derby with i don't know if you watched the home run derby but pete yeah, had, the, yeah the, the the real the, yeah almost like a motorcycle spray right like the cars and yeah, stuff like it, glassy yeah like. it was it was they're awesome and so that artist gregory siff uh was a favorite artist of mine from at least just like when i started painting like when i was 30 i was trying to identify like relatable people that i could say i, I like what they're doing uh, with their either art or their career. And he was an early um, person that I followed. And now we're like really good friends, which is awesome. And uh, there's another guy named David Garibaldi, who actually I saw on the stream earlier today, which is uh, amazing. He might still be on here, but he's uh, he does like performance art. So he does live painting where he'll paint a, a huge, giant, amazing portrait in like, you know, 30 minutes or less and he'll do it for that he'll do it for huge why does the name sound so familiar Garibaldi? he's not like they're they're when they're a photographer by the name too i thought there was a guy in the bay area that used to be a photographer he might have the same name so it's not the same guy then. well david Garibaldi's from sacramento so he's in he's in the bay and he's been doing this a long time and hmm. he does sometimes just go by garibaldi or garibaldi arts so it's possible it's the same dude but he is amazing um i have a piece uh, of his an original which is cool I like I love like collecting art too now, um, which means I'm running out of wall space because you're gonna, have to, now you're gonna have to buy a building for your warehouse. I'm gonna, have to, get, I'm gonna have to get the upstairs too. There's a third floor in this building that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But so, yeah. Dad, when did when did you know that he had the 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 chops, that skill, <laughs> skill to just was it? He, 
he was he come on, almost, when he came home from school and he was so bored he just drew all over his book top of his book and you know it's like i don't know no, what, it was a lot earlier than that he really it was just about when he started to walk he just he loved to draw he'd lay on his stomach on the floor and and draw um wow and he had a real good eye for for details uh, one of the first things i noticed he was probably about three and he was drawing a batman and he had legs and then he had the little line across the bottom that you could see between his legs that was his cape behind him and just you know like little details like that and uh i started buying pictures from him for one two or three cents uh and then he started cranking them out and I really upset him one time when he, <laughs> he, he cranked out a bunch. And then I said, no, no, I, I'm, those ones don't do it for me. And he was like, <laughs> shocked. <laughs> but, see, uh, that, but he had to overcome that. See, yeah, I didn't, the I, idea I, was, I, you, know, didn't like it, right? you can't just throw out anything for money. It's got to be good. <laughs> right. Somebody's got to like it. Well, that's but, awesome. Yeah, he, that's he like... started very early and I wanted him to go to art school. Um, yeah. I studied cinema at SC, and uh, before that, I studied art at, at um, uh, Art Center. Uh, and I was always into the arts, and we had a lot of art when he was a kid. And his wow. mom is very artistic as very well. Cool. And uh, we really encouraged him to go into art, but he was more pragmatic than that. He didn't want to be a starving artist, so he studied economics and just took the one required art go. class that he had to do to, you know, to get through school. Uh, but he, yeah, he's always grown. And he's did you graduate? Been. Did you graduate with an economics degree? Yeah. Like you did? Yeah, barely. That's what that's what my son Matt, he graduated with economics. Yeah, yeah. Blake went to UC Davis. Yeah. Uh, Matt Matt graduated from Chapman, Chapman University. So oh nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, uh, economics, yeah. Yeah, I wish I would have paid more attention to economics from back in the day. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, well, I think his, his so business awesome. studies of uh, the cats come to visit. That's just that's just so awesome because I mean, it's just like you talk about it all the time. It's like athletes. It's like you know, you're you're born. It's like you, this was like God given. It's like you know, you family, mom and dad, artists. And look at what you're doing now, and you know, it's like uh, like I talked earlier, like. I would assume that my dad would have been a great athlete if he wasn't stricken with polio and uh, just to see what he used to do as far as his workouts when he, you know, when I was a young kid and he used to, his workouts were boxing. He actually, he had three dads. So his second dad, his, his mom married three different men through over his, uh, when he was a child. And the second one was a, was a, a middleweight fighter back in the day. And, so my dad learned how to box back in those days. I remember him watching him as a young kid, watching with a sandbag and the punt in the speed bag in their garage. So, but mm -hmm. my whole point is, you know, blood when blood meets and has children, you just you think like, how do they get there to where they're at now? And a lot of it has to do with where they came from, and you know, mom and dad. So, yeah. Well, I think he's taught me more than I taught him. I doubt that. <laughs> but awfully proud, huh, Dad? Absolutely. That is so that is so cool. Even though it's like, I mean, I think you just saw him a week or so ago, but it's like even though you probably don't get to see him as much, well, now you can do this. But, you know, it's like, I mean, just uh, seeing his his gallery and where he's at, man, that's proud Papa. Proud Absolutely. Mama. Absolutely. And we know now that we've seen it, we know he's in a good place. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. That is awesome, Blake. Huh? Yeah, the place is amazing. So what's your next project? You relaxing or you got what do you got going on now? So there is a big uh, art fair every year called Art Basel um, in Miami. There's also one in Basel, Switzerland, where it started. But Art Basel in Miami is probably the biggest art fair in the U.S. every year. And uh, that's first week of December. And so um, I... I like I said, everything just seems to be working out in crazy ways. And so my people that I work with, uh, my team have gotten an entire hotel to beat the Surfcomer Hotel, which is like right in Long Beach on Collins Ave. And we're taking over the entire hotel for the entire week of Art Basel. And, and my job is doing the uh, curation, basically. Uh, so I'm going to be showing a piece. 
I'm only going to bring one piece down there. Um, I, I did a show a couple years ago where I brought like six pieces and it's, it's a pain in the butt to travel with that much art, but I'm going to bring one piece of art and then I'm just bringing in a lot of uh, other artists. And it's a cool opportunity to a, like support my friends that, that are very talented artists and deserve to be there. B like leverage that to like make connections with new artists that I want to meet um, by offering to like bring them in and include them in the, the shows that we're doing. So that's like a pretty big, that's definitely our next big thing is uh, make sure that we crush our Basel in Miami uh, in like three weeks. Uh, so like um, I would say the majority of it that you're doing is sports related, correct? It is. Uh, although lately, um, have you, have you heard anything about NFTs? I've heard of it. I don't know anything about it. So NFTs uh, short, super short is like, is digital art, right? And there's a lot, there's more in the back end, but within this digital art marketplace, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for artists to uh, grow both in like, you know, making money, getting, getting your art in front of new fans. And so I've been doing a lot of NFT stuff where it's not particular, it's not specifically sports. It's just uh, depending on the project. And so like one of them I did is called Knights of Degen and I'm basically was creative director and we designed these like, medieval knight characters, um, which has nothing to do with baseball, but it was very fun to, uh, you know, to, to branch out and do other things. So That's cool. I like, um, I like working on those types of projects where it's not just me and my art. It's like me and a team of artists and, and we're all kind of working towards a common goal. Uh, so like on that one, I got to do art director and work with some really talented illustrators and, and basically like bring an idea into, into life that like I couldn't draw myself but I can work, I work with smart people that, that can. Um, yeah. So it's a mix. You, say you, um, um, I know you have the thing with tops. Yep. And then, and then I guess I, I think what, unfortunately the tops is not going to do any more baseball cards. They, they did a deal with uh, frantics or fantics yeah. or whatever it, fanatics yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, tops is not going to go away, but um like, do you, do you, are you, do you have any deals with NBA, NHL, you know, uh, soccer, so not, like, like yeah, have you done anything, um, Ronaldo I, or Messi? I did, like, uh, you know, I did Ronaldinho pretty recently uh, and got to meet him, uh, which is cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I do, do other sports. It's like, usually when I'm doing other sports, it's like the, in, either an individual athlete coming to me or it's an agent uh, or their wife, you know, or something like that. Um, okay. Commission for the player. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm open to anything. I think that when the tops, you know, the tops news came out, it's a bummer because I think that tops is like a household name in the base card industry. And like, I think of tops cards as, you know, baseball, right. I think tops cards personally, but um, I think it's fine. I mean, tops also has a good soccer, uh, you know, a solid like soccer f1 uh you know other other kind of properties that they could work with an artist like myself and and make more cards and so I, i'm hoping i keep getting to work with tops um but i'm also at a point where like the nft stuff is going really well like what yeah. what gave me confidence to sign the lease for the downstairs is not because of the sports art that i'm doing it's because of the the digital stuff and it's, just, it's going really, really well. Um, like literally, like, the, not, like I would like the amount of money is like could, the po the possibilities is ridiculous, right? Yeah, or I mean, like, there's no ceiling. there's no ceiling. Like, like who know. like who regulates? Like who puts the pricing on that? And it's like you know what I mean? It's like well, I, yeah, I mean it's it's a supply and demand. So, thing, so, so let I, me. I, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, like, but I'm like so like I'm an infant to this. Like so it's like so it's you don't really get the painting itself. You get a photo of it and then you it. own it right that's i guess right. you have the domain to it and nobody else can right. use it correct that's me. correct and you're yep. selling that domain to that person yep but it's not the painting the painting you originally have right or yep. you're not or you're not doing a painting you're just making it digitally on the computer usually i still make a painting and okay. sometimes if you buy the nft i actually give you the painting so it's almost like the same, like the same, right? But the, the NFT marketplace, the digital community is, it's awesome. And it's like people that I would have a harder time reaching with my art if I wasn't participating, you know, as an artist in the space. And so it's just, it's been, it's been wild, man. Like this morning, CNBC was here uh, filming in my gallery. We did like a 
an interview about the digital art stuff that I'm doing in the NFT space. Uh, and that's going to air in a couple of weeks uh, is a segment right. with like a handful of different people in the space. But I was, I was the artist they interview. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. You got to send me the link when that happens. Absolutely. That that's awesome. That's just like, yeah, I mean, there's like, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's just so weird to think that like, but like in five years from now, it's, it's going to be second nature talking about that. Right? Of course. Like right now, it's just the infinite stages where it's like nobody yeah. really knows, but the, some people do. And, yep. and you know, it's like, like you have your phone. Well, this is mine. See this? Nobody can have this. But OK, right. but I put it on my wall. Right. How do I put it on my wall? So it's like. Well, down in the gallery, we have all these giant TV screens on the wall. And so we can well, just yeah, the, we get to choose. Right. So. Right. Well, Samsung, I know Samsung it has that. I don't know if all the other TVs, but yep. like, yep. You're allowed, you know, they mirror whatever's on your wall. So. Yeah, which is brilliant. I think that's it's just exciting awesome. times, and and I agree. I think that um, it's still uh in its infancy, and a lot of people don't understand it. Even I mean, anyone that says they completely understand it's lying because it's so new. But it's an exciting time to be like at the you know forefront of a new market for an artist. Um, it's great, and like I'm trying to help bring other artists into into the space. Um, and get them going because having you know multiple income streams and also mm. multiple streams of like fans right being able to find to connect with fans in one place because of baseball cards and somewhere else because of the nft stuff and somewhere else because of a different project is is good for just bringing like overall awareness to to the artist art i got another question for you blake let's hear it What's your favorite pizza place in New York City? Oh, oh man. Where um, you walk in there and you take one bite and you go, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. shoot. You know what? I mean, anybody from New York is probably going to like hate on me for this, but I like a place called Artichoke Pizza. Uh, I think it's freaking delicious. I'm not like a huge pizza guy. I actually just oh, found really? out. Apparently, Mike told me this, Dad, is that like two blocks that way actually over by the ace kind of they're apparently like a top five in the world pizza place uh, <laughs> you don't know slices they only sell full pies but he's like i can't believe we lived by this for like a year we haven't been there so we're gonna have to go check that one out we just um, have to just, just download the slice the slice app and then tell you all the top pizza places yeah my friends are like that's all we do it's like when we travel we're like hey we gotta look for pizza places pizza's you know? your thing well, that's our uh, that's our uh, sort of our go to thing. Uh, yeah. Well, my one son actually, Mason, who's seventeen, he's a vegan. He's been a vegan for almost three years now, and nice. so he he orders his pizza with no no cheese on it. But yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I could be vegan, but I'm more a plant based guy. But you know, okay. I'm pretty healthy. But I, for pizza, I will you know for that I'll I'll have a little bit of Free mozzarella cheese. Yeah. yeah, I don't eat dairy or meat anymore or anything like that. So. Um, nice. but pizza is our place, man. That's why I like New York City. You man. like that? How do you feel? What's that? Feel good about the plant based diet? You like it? Oh, I had, yeah, you know what? I had to do it. You know, it was about uh four years ago. Uh, a lot of inflammation in my body, a lot of aches and pains. My knee was killing me. You know, I got arthritis in my thumbs. So I went to my doctor and I said, Hey, I go, you know, what's going on? And they, and they said, Well, you know, the thing is, is like, you feel the way you feel by what you put in your mouth. And I've never had anybody tell me that. And I'm sitting there going, wow, makes a lot of sense. So if you want to do this, you want to know what you, your body, you know, cause I've known you, you, everybody knows this when you eat certain things, even though you might like it, you're going, God, I'm going to feel really crappy, you know, a couple hours later or something. Yep. Your body can only break every, we're all different. We can break down whatever we can break down. So, and so uh, she said, Hey, you need to just, so for four months, I did a total liquid diet, you know, pea protein, um, uh, protein drink. Uh, and then I had a green drink with, you know, super greens and uh, pomegranate juice and stuff like that, chia seeds and flax seeds. So I did it for four months straight. I made it, you know, and sure enough, as I started introducing foods back into my, my system, my body just reacted like, so Didn't it's like, like as soon as I started eating meat, I started reacting. I started feeling my my arthritis started coming back. It started aching and pain. Um, you know, one of my daughters is celiac, so she can't eat gluten. Now you don't have to be celiac not to 
register to like your stomach doesn't feel good uh, having gluten. Um, and I and now I find out that I'm not celiac, but you know what? I keep gluten out of my life um, and I feel a lot better. Now, if I do decide to eat something with gluten, you know, uh, there are some kind of, you know, these digestive pills that you can take. But most of the time, it just I'll have to deal with it. Um, but it's amazing how your body reacts as when you clean it up. You know, and here's the, you know, I eat, you know, chicken, bison, hamburgers, steak, pretty clean, you know, for throughout my life. And, um, you know, occasional sweets here and there, but then, but why is my body still feeling, I, you know, I say that all the time. I said, I, Gronkowski's body, like five years after when he officially retires, I don't know how he's going to move. I don't know how he's going to move. Maybe I'll go 10 years after that. He's going to be, I play baseball and I was like, holy criminy. You know, I know there's so many good things the medical field is doing today about longevity and stuff, which I'm totally into, but. The bottom line is you feel the way you feel by what you put in your mouth. And the only way you're going to really understand and know it is by cleaning your system out and then reintroducing foods to your body. And so that's what happened. But, um, you know, pizzas, there are there are some really good gluten free pizza places that have very, very good dough that is very close to New York style pizzas we found. So but with the family, it's all about pizza. Especially yeah. traveling, like we got to find these little really good pizza places. So, yeah. Well, if you have any Brooklyn Rex, I'm open. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Or if, you, if you have any recommendations of places you've been to in New York, no, I didn't. Just by the slices, man. I, I can't even think of any names. I'm sure they're a lot better than I've been there. So it's like, but I'll tell you what. I mean, I, when we went to the the Mets, the Mets, they would bring in pizza all the time, and then all of a sudden they stopped bringing pizza in because everybody was like. Uh, everybody was like cleaning their, you know, up eating good foods and stuff. And I said, what are we doing here? This is New York. We got to split. Let's have pizzas. We have pizzas. We're going to win. Next thing you know, there was pizzas in the clubhouse before the game. And then we started winning again. But <laughs> you, you go to New York, man, there's nothing but get, get just get a big pie. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. yeah. It, did you oh. before before the plant based? Did you like Big Macs? You know, it's probably one of the things that probably it's like I've never eaten a Big Mac my whole life. It's like, <laughs> you know, um, I just don't like all that stuff on it. I'm a, I don't like yeah. condiments. I, I'm just a yeah, plain meat and bun guy. So, I mean, I always, I mean, if I did order one, it was plain. So it was more like a double double, you know. Right, you know, good old right. In and Out burgers. You know, that's like I, I love it. Now, now I if I go to In and Out, I'll, I'll, I'll do the the uh, lettuce wrap. You know, so. Yep. Yep. Protein style. Yeah. So, I mean, that's good, man. I, I, man, I gotta make it, I gotta make it there. We'll go have a pizza together. So I, you know yeah. what? I think, look, I'll do some research. you know what? I, I'm like, definitely, um, I don't know when, he, obviously I think the, the Cape Cod league starts sometime in June, I believe, or maybe a little bit sooner. So, uh, you know, that's not too far away from Come New York here. city. I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm gonna, I can't wait to see your place and see you yeah, in man. person. And yeah, yeah, that would be great. It'd be finally really great, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Long time coming. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, uh, and, and like I said, like anytime you need anything done, I'll take care of it for you. And um, man, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. And just like be here with your dad. And your dad, it's like they can see that, like. Man, it's just so awesome, you know, just to, to see the success you've had. And, and it's just, I mean, it's just starting, too. It's like, I mean, think about that, man. You might have five floors. Yeah. You might have five floor gallery someday, right? Yeah, it might. Yeah. Yeah, have to buy the building and start building up. I know. He wants, how's, he the, wants how's, the, how's the economy there in New York? How's the economy doing? The economy doing good there. What's it? What's what's it? Is it? I mean, I don't know. I think a lot that, of vacancies. Uh, there's a lot of vacancies in retail spaces. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and I think that like COVID changed how people think about work and like made a lot like it, it made clear that like a lot of a lot of jobs can be done remotely and be done. Yeah. Done remotely successfully. So that can save companies money with real estate. And so it'll be interesting to see how those spaces get used, you know, whether it's for affordable housing or creative spaces, uh, it's going to be fun. Um, well, that goes back block. 
uh, it'll be fun to see. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of vacancies, and that you know that worked to my advantage because this guy realized that he's probably not going to rent this building uh, immediately, so he let me uh, get in there for a little while and let me make a run of it. You know, Perfect. but I think that the companies like the businesses that are here, like people are out in force um, now and, you know, they're doing, you know, checking uh, vaccines and stuff to, for indoor dining. And, uh, you know, there's regulations, but people are have been cooped up for a year and a half and I think are excited to go out and see, you know, have real social interactions. So, you know, I have friends that work in the service industry that that say like they're they've never been busier. Um, yeah, that's which, great. Which that's great. really good. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. I know because the thing is, is like, you know, I mean, everybody got so used to doing pickup, you know, um, you know, order, go pick it up. And now now they don't have to do that. They go out there and, and eat in the restaurants yeah. and eat outside. Yeah. And although it's but getting even, cooler. Yeah. I mean, even like a DoorDash or Uber Eats type of thing, like anytime I'm in, there's like a little burger joint right down right below my, you know, next door to me. And right. uh, they're the ones that said they've, they've been never been busier. But I'll, you know, I'll, I'll sit at the bar and eat lunch. And like, there's a constant flow. Like they're always having people just pick up orders to go, orders to go, orders to go, orders to go. Yeah. So it like, doesn't look super busy in there. But always, they're busy. They're always busy. They seem right. to be always busy. Um, but well, that's a, a yeah. great burger. Well, that's, it's just, you know, that's, if you want to say that the down, I mean, there's been a lot of downsides with the, the pandemic, but the downside of just the convenience of not having to do things and go out. And, and that's, the, that's sort of the sad thing about it. It's like, you're so they're they're everybody's so used to just being in the spot. Oh, I don't know if I want to. I'll just call and have it picked up instead. Of, let's just go. Let's let's try to make this back to what it used to be. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think that there was a part of that 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 benefited me um, because I needed time. I like I needed to spend time in my studio alone and work. Uh, and there's a lot of distractions in New York. And so, you know, when COVID happened and people stopped calling to hang out, uh, I got busy. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't squander that time. I used it to to work on my craft and uh, and paint. That's awesome. I say this yeah. all the time. I tell my boys, I said, you don't really know who you are unless you can be by yourself. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't like being by themselves and you got to be comfortable being by yourself to get to know who you are. And look at that, you got to be by yourself and do what you love to do. And it's like, and man, it's flourishing. I know. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm a lucky man. <laughs> talented. Talented. Yeah. Talented. Yeah, I think. I well, think dude, let's do this. Let's do this I'll again. Working. Absolutely, Mark. I, I appreciate you so much. Let's do this again. I mean, it, um, yeah, it's free flowing. I'm sure we talk forever and. You know, it's funny. It's like I'm so into podcasts now. It's like, I man, I love like I listen to Joe Rogan. I don't know if you listen to Joe Rogan all the time, but Joe Rogan. It's like, man, I would never have listened to and and get to know like all these people that he's interviewing if probably if the pandemic didn't happen. It's like now it's like yeah. this is like three it's one of things that my son, my son and I, Mason, when we travel and we drive around it's like we're listening to podcasts all the time it's just so interesting to to listen to you know when you send somebody talking to somebody for three three and a half hours it's like and it's just like you and i were just bsing you yeah. know with no restrictions yeah. it's like okay we're just like being who we are and and it's like you just it's so it's so cool so yeah yeah it's awesome i do podcasts i do a lot of audiobooks as well but do you really I listen to a book yeah um that's been a lot who, of fun who do you like to listen to podcasts Who's like the number one uh, guy, girl? Uh, Lewis Howes, Tim Ferriss. Uh, I'll do Joe Rogan sometimes, depending on the guest. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, if I if I do podcasts, it's usually shorter form than than the three hour ones. If I'm going to listen to a three hour thing, I'll I'll usually just kick it up to eight hours and do a book. Uh, yeah, I do, oh, okay. I do a lot of audio books um, on Audible. Is it the is it the person that wrote the book or is it just a, a generic it person? I actually, I have a, there's two narrators that I like on Audible that are it doesn't matter what book it is if they if they're reading it I'll buy it and so I actually follow narrators more than anything else um, just because the I think the art form of an audio book is you know the audio part uh, is well is part of it I think that like I do really like when the author reads their own book right. as long as they're 
moderate like i would prefer that as long as they're like moderately good at at narration and so there's been times where the author reads their own book and it's hard to hold my attention if you know if they don't have the voice for it or it, according to me you know who knows but yeah rc bray and uh uh ray porter are my two so what are what are they what's the what do they mainly focus on is there anything anything that they focus on or is it art or is it just more just no it, no it has nothing to do with art like oh, rc okay. bray uh it, i mean it's like me like like anybody could come to me and say paint me a bridge paint me a cat paint me an abstract painting like whatever like whatever they want i'm gonna i'm gonna provide them that, that service a narrator is the same way so somebody says they come in they say hey i have a whatever a romantic comedy book i want you to read he says okay if you pay the price like i'll read that i have a zombie fiction book uh rc bray has done a lot of zombie fiction and so i've listened to probably like 20 zombie books and i didn't even i wasn't really into zombie books until i until i listened to 20 of them and now i'm like into it and to the point where i'm like writing my own uh slow passion project over a long time but specifically i want to write this book so that it gets narrated by my favorite narrator uh which would just be like another fun milestone you know? so what so have you painted a zombie i haven't painted a zombie yet is there yeah. is there a specific zombie you like or you have your own picture of your own zombie in your head that you I got a picture in my head you're so gonna break, you're gonna break out for your book yeah <laughs> well uh yeah, I mean the zombie outbreak that that happens in my book happens at like a music festival at a rave, and so everyone's all decked out in their colorful, bright, you know, rave gear. Uh, so it should be fun. It's called Zomb Beach. It's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it should be, it should be great. Spring break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's like a exactly. It's like a zombie outbreak at like a spring break type of situation. Oh, uh, that'd be awesome. It's just south of Laguna. <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah 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 man that, that would be uh how, how do we get from soda to zombies that's great man it's awesome i love it yeah. man well i'm gonna uh i'm gonna call it i actually i told a friend that i'd go see him dj tonight i gotta i'm gonna shower and get ready yeah it's nine it's nine o'clock where you're at yeah yeah you it's still six got o'clock it. and it's you pitch black left. <laughs> yeah what's that yeah, I said if you have any daylight left over there, it's it's no, there. no, it's no, gone. No. It's, 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 all, it's all gone. It's all gone. Yeah. yeah, it's gone. It's like I think our like sunset's like four fifty something. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. This is it's, where it's are you, Mark? In uh, Irvine, Orange County, Irvine. Yeah, so you know, like uh, shoot, shoot, like twenty minutes from Anaheim Stadium, ten minutes from John Wayne Airport. Ten minutes. I want to go to Balboa Island. Love it. Love Balboa Island. Love Crystal Cove. Just, I mean, the whole area. You know, I've been, I've been in Orange County pretty much my whole adult life. Um, my first wife was from this area. Met her at school at USC, and we always came down here. The uh, kids and Fifteenth Street um, in Newport when we were kids, and been uh, started living down here like in the early '80s at, in, during college, and been here ever since. Area, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a great. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to think about if you know if you ever had to like go and live somewhere else. It's hard to think about because I've been all over the country, most of it, majority of it, and you know I keep you know I keep coming back to California, and you just go. I know I pay a lot of taxes. I know I have all this other BS to deal with, but it's all here. It's all here, right? And. Um, you know, maybe if I grew up where there was season, it was seasons and the change of the leaves and you get snow. And so I'd, I'd feel differently. But growing up in California, we didn't have that, unfortunately. And, and if we saw snow, we usually had to drive up to the mountains to get it. You know, so yeah. you get to experience it in New York City. That that No, and as soon as it starts snowing, I'll wish I'm at the beach with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the very beginning, you'll be like, oh, let's go, out, let's go for a walk. It's beautiful. Let's yeah. go get a let's go get a pizza and coffee and let's just go hang out and so is the city I know where to go but is the city live right now is it is it as live as it was before especially on weekends or is it sort of still uh, yeah. yeah I mean tr tonight will be it'll probably be pretty busy out for mm -hmm. sure where we're going is is uh 
more pri- I think it'll be more low key. But like, in, if we go into Manhattan to like go out, out, it would probably be popping. But I'm not like a popping guy. Like I, I don't know. I'm that's not my scene. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy it with with some close friends. I'd I'd rather be with a small handful of people I'm I'm close with in a, in a, like an environment where I can hear each other talk than like. Right, you know, loud nightclubs battling, oh. trying to get to the bar for a drink or something is like, uh, you know, definitely uh, not something that I seek out. Yeah, well, you're How not twenty you? anymore. Well, yeah, yeah. How far are you so from Brooklyn, from your to, to Manhattan? Yeah. How far uh, are you? Fifteen minutes, ten minutes. Oh, that's not bad. Right, I mean, I'm right by the Brooklyn Bridge, so. Oh, I okay. Could, uh, yeah, I can get there pretty fast. Um, but man, I, I love Brooklyn. Like, I don't, I don't really feel the need to go into Manhattan unless there's something cool going on to go like support a friend. Like, I'm like I locked in like, in Brooklyn. I think the only time that I was ever in Brooklyn was at Peter Luger's. I think the Steakhouse, Peter Luger's. I think so, there in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. you ever been there? I've never no, been yet. It's a yeah. just I have a world, collector. I mean, it's like everybody. Knows, it's just the big steaks and they right there in yeah. the front cut and slice them and it's just. Delicious meat. So yeah. that's the thing yeah. that you like yeah. to Collector recently uh, is, is planning a trip to New York, and he said he wants to take me to Peter Luger's. Sounds cool to me. There you go. Great yeah. beef. Great beef. Yeah. Let me know. Take a photo of that. Take a photo of it when, you, when you're when you there. And just, Mark, is this what you remember? I yeah. <laughs> I, take a, I take photos of everything, man. I video. You really? All the time. Yeah. I'm always capturing the moment, uh, which is good. I have a lot of, uh, you know, hard drives and hard drives of, capturing this whole artistic journey for me and that'll be fun for someone else to go through later yeah no kidding wow yeah and it's like i you know it's like you have all these art that which is great you can have it it's like i got these these sort of artifacts trophies as you say that uh that i have yeah. and that uh, my kids are gonna have a good time with when i'm someday when i'm gone but hopefully yeah. it's not for a long time so yeah, hopefully, but make the best of it while we can, I guess. I know, I know. Yeah. Dad, you're doing good? All doing good? Doing good. Doing good. Our, yeah. our trip to Brooklyn was our, our first time uh, our first time going anywhere. <laughs> yeah? How was traveling How was traveling for you? Did you was it it was bit actually bit? better than, uh, than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, I was afraid we were going to have, you know, angry people on the plane refusing to wear masks and all that crap. Yeah. But it was everything was cool. Everybody was cool. Um, but now we've settled back into, you know, the usual everything delivered and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of uh, got used to that. Yeah, yeah. Traveling is, uh, yeah. Even though it's just funny, like all the travel we've done all summer, it's like the planes are so crowded. But then again. They are going to be crowded because there's so many planes over in the graveyard area that are waiting because they, they don't have the pilots to, or they're not hiring them or whatever it may be. Yeah. That, so it's like we think they're crowded, but there should be more flights out there. And but yeah, things have got. I've I've done the same thing where I cross my fingers and you you see the through the media the, these honorary people that on flights and stuff. You like I just hope that doesn't happen. Where we're at, you know and. Um, but you know, luckily, luckily it hasn't, but you know, yeah. So um, we're, uh, looking forward to maybe making another visit, uh, maybe in the spring or something, if we can't get Blake out here for the holidays, Thanksgiving, I'm obviously you'd be separated, maybe Christmas, right? Maybe, 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 maybe not. Maybe. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. We'll, we'll hit. <laughs> yeah. He's got a studio here, so he can even, oh, grow. there you go. Yeah. yeah. You would be painting on planes too, right? Yeah. Well, I got a little <laughs> iPad. <laughs> <on>. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey, like, let me know anytime you want to just. I will, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a package together. It's probably gonna take uh, tops a couple weeks, um, at least to get these beautiful job. Three weeks, but man. thank you, man. I, I, it's awesome, and yeah, I hope everybody out there go buy the the tops. Yeah, yeah, you it's heard a great, it. It's a great card. Card. I usually just get one of each of his cards, but I got six of that one. Yeah, yeah. It's been the whole series of all these things is like actually the guy that does my uh, does been doing my cars for years, washing my cars, and 
he's got one of his buddies that knows that he does it for me. And like over the course of this last year, he's brought a bunch of those cards in to have me sign them because he buys pretty much one of everything that's out there. So uh, I think they're just the most beautiful cards, man. It's just like in that with that paint pen to sign it with the paint pen. Yeah. Me, I, think, I think all autographs should be done with the paint pen and not a Sharpie anymore. Because yeah. that paint pen yeah, looks just with that deco. Yeah. It's just awesome. I mean, yeah. it's like, and it's just so, it's just, it's just so free flowing when you, when you write on there. And um, yeah, I would prefer to do with a paint pen all the time. Yeah. Well, I'll send you pens back when I send more cards down. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Well, yeah. thank you guys. I appreciate, I appreciate and, uh, it. Hey, thank you. It was great talking to you. Great talking and, and, and meeting you via this. And then, Hopefully we can all meet in person sometime yep. soon and have a great yep. Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, a great holidays and a new year. And you too. Feel free to, feel free to reach out anytime, Blake, man. Thank yeah. you for everything. Yeah. Truly. Best your family course. too. It's really, it's really cool. I love, I just, I love it. This is the success and, and it just, you know, uh, our connection just, it's right here. So. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. You got it. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank all you guys right. for watching. I'll see you guys all soon. <laughs>